Queen Mary, renowned for her penchant for repurposing jewels, left behind a legacy of tiara remnants throughout her lifetime. While some of these pieces continue to grace the royal family's collection, others have been sold, disassembled, or have quietly faded into obscurity. Let's take a look at Queen Mary's long-lost and hidden tiaras. Before we begin, please support my channel by clicking the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. Let's begin with the tiaras that have mysteriously disappeared from sight. Whether Queen Mary repurposed them for other jewels or they remain tucked away in the royal vaults, their whereabouts have been shrouded in mystery for many years. One such tiara is Queen Mary's Russian bando, rumored to have originated from the collection of Empress Maria Fyodorovna of Russia, though its exact provenance remains unverified. This diamond sunburst bando, adorned with a prominent central sapphire, graced Queen Mary's head during the 1930s and 40s. She occasionally swapped the sapphire for her intricately carved emerald brooch, a treasured gift from the ladies of India at the 1911 Delhi Durbar. Following her passing in 1953, the tiara was bequeathed to the Queen, although Queen Mary never publicly adorned Maria Fyodorovna's sapphire bando. She often lent it to her sister, Princess Margaret, during the 1950s and 60s, who also utilized the central sapphire as a brooch. However, the bando has remained absent from public view for over half a century. Another tiara with a mysterious absence is the Queen's diamond lozenge tiara, passed down to Princess Margaret. Crafted sometime before 1935, the tiara was lent to Princess Margaret a decade later, albeit missing its pearl toppers, for the inauguration of Queen Juliana in the Netherlands. Since then, this petite sparkler has eluded public sightings, with hopes lingering for its preservation within the royal vaults. Moving on, the Westminster Laurel Leaf Bando, a delicate diamond necklace conversion, appears to have vanished into the depths of the royal vaults. Originally gifted to Princess Mary by the opulent first Duke of Westminster upon her marriage to Prince George, Duke of York, this precious necklace featured a laurel leaf motif intertwined with larger diamonds. Princess Mary later transformed it into a bando-style tiara, enhancing its allure with geometric frames. Sadly, scarce photographs remain of this enchanting piece, leaving its fate uncertain. While Queen Mary's penchant for jewelry redesign suggests the possibility of the tiara's loss, definitive information remains elusive. If not dismantled, it likely passed to the Queen in 1953 and now rests within the palace confines. One can only hope for its resurrection, whether adorning a neck or gracing a regal head once more. Among the array of tiaras gifted to her on her wedding day, Queen Mary's choice for her nuptials revealed a profound understanding of royal customs. Concealed amidst the blossoms adorning her hair was the Collingwood Fringe Tiara, a convertible necklace tiara presented by her new husband's grandmother, Queen Victoria. While her selection surely delighted her esteemed grandmother-in-law, the Collingwood Fringe Tiara failed to capture Mary's enduring favor. Despite being captured in photographs wearing the necklace version of the tiara, complemented by pieces from the Tech Turquoise Suite, there are scant portraits of Mary donning the piece in its tiara form. Eventually, in 1919, she made the decision to dismantle the Collingwood Fringe entirely, repurposing its diamonds for her new, modern fringe tiara. It's truly disheartening to accept the absence of this particular tiara. Given to Queen Mary as yet another wedding present, this time by the people of the county of Surrey, the Surrey tiara boasted a distinctive fringe design adorned with floral motifs and round diamonds, each forming an elegant picket of the piece. Regrettably, the identity of the tiara's creator remains a mystery, though it was constructed to be convertible. In an image captured in 1905, one can observe the tiara detached from its frame and gracefully worn as a necklace. However, in 1913, Queen Mary made the difficult decision to dismantle the Surrey tiara, repurposing its precious stones in the creation of two other magnificent tiaras. Thirteen of the larger stones found new homes as replacements for the pearls that once adorned the summit of the girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara while several other diamonds were skillfully incorporated into the exquisite design of the honeysuckle tiara. In that very year, Queen Mary chose to dismantle the Lady of England tiara. 
presented to her as a wedding gift in 1893 by a committee of 650 ladies of England, this exquisite tiara crafted by Hunt and Roskell boasted the versatility of being worn as a necklace or a corsage ornament. However, Queen Mary made the decision to repurpose the diamonds from this tiara, utilizing them in the creation of two new and remarkable tiaras, the Lover's Knot Tiara and the Honeysuckle Tiara. Like her grandmother, who won the famous Cambridge Emeralds in a charity lottery, Mary supposedly won these amethysts at an auction. Transforming them into a parure, Queen Mary adorned herself with a tiara, necklace, earrings, and a brooch, showcasing the elegance of the gems. Upon Queen Mary's passing in 1953, the amethyst tiara and parure passed on to an undisclosed member of her family, potentially either the Queen Mother or Princess Margaret, although there are no images of them wearing it. By the 1980s, the parure found its way into the possession of the Ravel family, and it was donned by Rorick Ravel's wife on their wedding day in 1983. Reflecting on its origins, Rorick Ravel speculated. As far as I know, Princess Margaret inherited it directly from the Queen Mother. She sold it in the early 80s while her mother was still alive. While the whereabouts of the tiara remain a mystery, sightings of the necklace adorning the neck of Vogue editor Anna Winter have stirred curiosity. Is it merely on loan or has it become a permanent addition to her jewelry collection? Who knows? Regrettably, the fate of next exquisite piece was short-lived. During an extensive eight-month journey across the British Empire with her husband, then known as the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall, the royal couple embarked on an exploration of distant lands. It was during their time in Africa that the future queen received a remarkable gift of 675 diamonds from De Beers. Upon their return, Queen Mary chose to utilize these diamonds to commission a breathtaking tiara from Boucheron. Thus, in 1902, the Boucheron Loop Tiara came into existence. This remarkable piece featured upright diamond loops, adorned with individual diamond elements that appeared to float, delicately held together by thin wire. The resulting effect was nothing short of magical, albeit incredibly fragile. Unfortunately, approximately a decade later, Queen Mary made the decision to dismantle the tiara, repurposing the diamonds to create the magnificent Delhi Derbar tiara. The Cambridge Sapphire Perot tiara, crafted by unknown artisans in the latter half of the 19th century, holds a rich history. Queen Mary inherited these precious sapphires from her aunt, Princess Augusta, Grand Duchess of Mecklenburg-Strelitz, who, in turn, received them from her mother, the Duchess of Cambridge. In 1934, Queen Mary bestowed the tiara upon her daughter-in-law, Princess Marina, Duchess of Kent, as a wedding gift for her union with her son, George, Duke of Kent. Over two generations, the Kent family cherished the tiara, but it was sold some time ago by the present Duke and Duchess of Kent. They auctioned off the original tiara, adorned with sapphires at the top, alongside the necklace, stomacher, and possibly one bracelet or brooch. Despite parting with some pieces, they chose to retain others, including the newly sapphire button tiara. The Duchess of Kent has elegantly showcased the revamped tiara on numerous occasions. Additionally, it appears she has preserved at least one of the original sapphire brooches. Thank you for watching this video. Share your impressions in the comments and support my channel by subscribing and liking. Thank you.